Hey everybody, this is Joe. Thank you for watching my Giga Texas construction update video. Well, happy Friday here at Giga Texas, the 19th of August, 2022. For today, I thought I would give you some early morning looks inside the building. Specifically, we start off on the casting machine structure, as you see by some of these images, and we look inside to see what the activity is, considering that they have so many stampings outside the facility in this general location. And what you can see is three gigapresses that we know are functioning, uh, are in operation and working. And on the north end, they're installing that DMG Mori CNC or milling machine. And you get a chance to see that as well. Also, since the lighting conditions are perfect, I continued the drone looking inside over on the west side of the battery 4680 battery cell production location and you get a chance to see what that looks like inside as well so there's thunderstorms in the forecast for today it is overcast a little bit rainy but uh, otherwise perfect conditions for an early morning look inside i hope you enjoy the uh, views and i hope you have a great weekend thank you very much for watching my drones are ready and raring to go Let's go flying over Giga, Texas. It's a little bit rainy and overcast, but the winds are perfect and the lighting is excellent for us to take a look inside the casting machine structure. And we have a surprise inside as well. So as we wrap around the structure and we see where all the castings are outside, let's take a look inside and see where those castings came from. This is on the south end of the casting machine structure. What you can see is the operational casting machines farther from the drone. And in the foreground, you can see two foundation areas that are being prepared, most likely for the larger 9,000 ton gigapress, but it has not arrived. However, there is a surprise. If you count the number of operational or installed casting machines, you can see four of them. So Giga Texas has now installed a fourth gigapress and is most likely undergoing some sort of testing with it and you can see that fourth gigapress coming into view on the right hand side of the screen so i was unaware that they had expanded to four but now everybody knows and this is another outstanding sign for production at giga texas as we continue to move the drone to the north I'm giving you a closer view of that fourth gigapress that's in the process of being assembled and tested. And as we move farther to the north, you can see the area that is being used for quite a bit of the deliveries of crates and other materials. Also, you can see more castings on the ground right here in the foreground. And you can also see through the columns towards the paint shop area as well. As we continue to move towards the north, we're now entering the area where we recently saw all the deliveries for the DMG Mori CNC and milling machine. And you can see them installing it here, coming into view from the right, moving towards the center of the structure. So this is another large machine, and it's very interesting to see how this may uh, be used in the future. Also, if you look at the size of the casting machine structure and how much empty space there is, this gives you a great idea about the expansion capability that is within Giga Texas. And here you can see another portion of that DMG Mori machine that has been delivered into the casting machine structure. There's also a scaffolding uh, installed here on the northeast corner and it looks like some sort of uh, room area has been uh, constructed as well directly underneath this scaffolding. So 
So anyway, I hope that you enjoyed these views of the inside of the casting machine structure. So now let's take a look at the overall building and look at some more activity on the north end. let's return closer to the north end of the structure. You see some deliveries going on. You see these three loading bays into the caster machine structure. We can also, with this angle, look inside this portion of the paint shop. You can see a lot of empty space. This may be an area where they will continue to expand using some of the modular systems like we see in the green wrapped large container here. I also get a chance to see onto the ground floor here, the paint shop, and more of that green wrapped uh, modular system that uh, could be installed. Now we're passing the plastics manufacturing two doors and uh, not a lot of activity, but I can see a little bit inside here. And we can take a look into the third floor of the battery cell production location. As you can see, also look down into the second and first floor a little bit. As we continue to wrap around the northwest corner of the structure, I'll try to give you some more views inside the building since the lighting continues to be excellent for this purpose. And you can see a lot of the detail that's going on at the northwest corner. You can see in the third floor here, it looks like some sort of gathering location. And at one point I saw a mini theater stood up there, so it may be for uh, employee information. But as we continue to wrap around the building heading towards the south, we can see some areas that are uh, looks like conference rooms. We can also see uh, more of the construction on the just north of this wall and it looks like some utilities and some hallways. And now we're moving into the area where the 4680 production is ongoing. You can see the equipment that is operational and it goes all the way to the far wall. And uh, as you can see, the equipment is operational. It's uh, producing uh, the batteries and there's employees that are uh, working here as well. And it does look like they're putting up uh, a little bit of barriers in this location. So Let's go ahead and look at the bottom floor. We can see the cargo loading into the 4680 production location as well. And uh, that's about it for looking inside today. So let's head up onto the roof and see some new developments with the solar panel installation. And there's activity going on on this expanded area for the new panels. And make sure you wave at the workers. There's three of them that they notice the drone and they're waving at you and uh, just appreciate the work that, that these guys are doing. And this expansion continues and the number of solar panels that are arriving on site uh, continues. And uh, uh, as we've mentioned in the previous video, there's about 50,000 or more uh, solar panels remaining to be installed on the entire roof. So they will be busy for quite some time. But uh, we're approaching the bottom part of the T in Tesla, and I'll go over towards the HVAC ducting and enclosure area just to show you the progress. The fourth enclosure on the right-hand side from the top is now completed, and it looks like they're beginning work on the fifth one. And there will be, in total, nine of these enclosures. So let's go ahead and move to the north and see how the electrical substation is progressing today. It's actually a good thing that we have so many clouds over Giga Texas today, so I'm able to image this construction site for the Megapack and the electrical substation in a direction heading towards the east. And normally I can't do that because of the sun. But what you can see here is progress on the main site for the electrical substation. They're doing some excavation work in what will eventually be essentially the pads for some of the electronic equipment that will be installed. 
They'll most likely put some sort of uh, concrete base and then they'll erect some scaffolding and then the electronic components will be attached to that. They're also connecting into that grid that we saw constructed earlier. That's the grounding grid that underlies the entire structure and it's what uh, helps ground the entire electrical substation. As I get in closer here, we can also see work has begun on the installation of the corrugated steel stormwater pipe, and it looks like they are trenching on the north side, uh, exiting from the water detention pond on the left, and then going around the site itself. So it'll be interesting to see how they do this uh, installation. I'll continue to get a little bit closer. You can see how that trenching appears and they're lining the bottom of that with gravel. And I'll give you a closer look at the, these uh, excavations, which will eventually be the bases of some of the electronic equipment. If you take a look, they are also uh, preparing some of the ground with some of that gravel, it looks like, that mix. And if you reference the uh, temporary electrical substation, you can see how that uh, scaffolding and the electronic equipment is installed. We'll see something similar in the northern part where they're working now. Again, this gravel be, will be used to help uh, line that entire construction site. See all the uh, concrete piping. And again, looking at that temporary station, how it is, and then compare to what the larger permanent station will appear when it is completed. So let's go ahead and reposition the drone facing to the east. You get a chance to see some of the far north as we are panning the drone and we'll fly over the Martin Marietta plant and head over to the battery cathode plant to see the significant progress that's going on today. Now that we're at the battery cathode plant, let's start with the roof and I'll show you the progress that is going on. As you can see, the white wrapped insulation panels are in position here and they've uh, lined the edges of the roof with the wood. You can see this long tube or pipe coming to the south along the top of the roof and it's where they are spraying that lightweight concrete mixture. Now we've talked about this in the past, uh, several videos. And what this will be is they line the roof with the sort of the styrofoam like panel installation and then they spray this lightweight concrete on top and this provides a sturdy and durable roof structure and then they'll put the final weatherproof membrane on top of this. This is again very similar to what we saw in the northwest corner of the main factory over the battery cell production area. I'll bring the drone down a little bit closer. You can see the uh, yellow forms for the perimeter grade beam are still in place waiting for concrete. You can see uh, crews that are starting the day getting their safety briefings and just talking about what work is needed today. On the ground floor you can see that yellow plastic material. This is in preparation for starting slab work on the ground floor. And as we fly to the north on the west side you can also see the electrical and plumbing installation in this location is again mostly completed except for this I guess you'd call it a manifold area with all of these pipes uh, and a lot of risers here so again we'll probably see some sort of tank system or maybe tank and for vehicles. I just noticed on the lower left hand corner here we have large pipes these will probably be some sort of uh, water pipes I um, can't say for sure what they will be used for, but if you know, I'd like to hear in the comments and I would appreciate that. So let's continue to fly further to the north. I just want to give you another view of the excavation area that is uh, under a lot of progress today. You'll see many of the center dump trucks getting loaded up and additional excavation work that is going on. All of this dirt is being moved over to the east side material storage location for grade work and uh, I'll show you that a little bit later. But you can see quite a few trucks lined up to uh, get that dirt and move it over there. I also want to just recap again the new material, our 
equipment storage location here. You can see that lone tree and this large uh, pasture. This is again where they did the filming for the Model Ys chasing around for uh, Cyber Rodeo. But uh, this just gives you a good view of how this location appears today, where it is in relation to the other very large pasture that you can see and where the excavation work is ongoing with all of these center dump trucks that are lined up. And uh, as I said, we'll follow those over a little bit later and show you where all of this dirt is going, but it's pretty significant progress that they are doing today. Let's fly back to the battery cathode plant and continue the tour on the east side of the structure and see some more of the details that are going on. The northeast corner again has that temporary scaffolding for stairs. You can see the floor decking on the second and third floors as well as the roof decking have already reached the northern boundary. And as we pull in closer, you can just see how that appears now. There's another large open bay to the ground floor in this particular section of the structure. And what we're approaching here is this is the trucks and delivery mechanism that uh, mixes up all of that lightweight cement. And then if you follow the pipe going up to the roof, this is where it's pumped up and what they're using to spray that material onto the roof. And we saw these uh, equipment arrive about two weeks ago over in the West uh, material storage location. And so it's great to see them in operation. As we continue further to the south along this side of the building, this just gives you an idea of how it all appears. Some people will most likely ask about the water on the concrete. Uh, part of it is for curing and part of it is because it has been raining here recently. And you can see work on the ground floor in preparation for more concrete. So let's head over to the yard location and take a look at the progress here. So you can see the center dump trucks arriving into this location where the uh, expansion most likely of the warehouse on wheels yard will happen. And they are filling the, this area with dirt to help correct the grade and potentially uh, strengthen the ground. I was hoping to be able to show you a dump uh, in action, but uh, unfortunately it looks like they were talking with the crews and deciding where exactly they needed that to happen. So unable to get that onto the this particular video. But I'm going to pan the drone around to show you all of the work to reconfigure this entire material storage and trailer location. You can see how this looks near the tree uh, area between this part of the trailers and the other uh, trailer section off to the left. And I'll fly over here just to show you how some of the workshops appear and those are what are coming under the, uh, the center of the screen right now. And also, I'm going to fly the drone further to the southeast to show you another very large clearing that has recently happened. And it looks like there is some work going on here, in addition to having some trailers and uh, some composting, uh, the red trailer uh, stored here as well. And uh, you can see the remaining wall panels that they use to make the cyber planters uh, right in this location and overall just the amount of dirt and earthwork that has been done here to reconfigure this. So big changes. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot of relocation of materials, equipment, and trailers at some point to allow further construction or at least expansion in this particular uh, location of the site. We're now flying to the east parking lot, and this is where the new location for new car temporary parking, staging, and then pickup by transport trucks will occur. They still have not installed the light posts here yet, but I would expect that would be fairly soon, and then I would like to see this uh, area in operation. We can also see the completion of the paving in this smaller parking lot. You can see the light pole base is already in place and you can see this uh, three row area of chargers and also in relation to the secondary entrance on this side. So it'll be interesting to see how this is used but this would be a great place for a lot of employees uh, to be able to park and enter in that particular part of the building. 
This is the sedimentation basin. It's part of the water management system. There's an outfall channel that you can see on the left here kind of sneaking around, and that's where the water would uh, drain. And this dirt location is continuing to see excavation, and the trucks are hauling a lot of this uh, excess dirt back over to the east side where we saw all that reconfiguration. The material storage here has continued to expand, especially with all of these trailers. And this may be a temporary spot for these trailers while they prepare to expand that warehouse on wheels on the east side. Coming up to this new cargo bay apron uh, that's still under construction, we can see the plumbing work uh, is still underway. But once that is done, they should uh, rebar and concrete this area and the five uh, cargo bays with the plastic have got the load levelers uh, being ready to be installed. And here we just see another car carrier taking away a bunch of Model Ys as we're looking at the east side of the stamping machine structure and uh, just the overall look of the south. So I'm going to give you a little bit different perspective on the south loading and parking ramp and also the material storage on this end of the building and uh, I want to just give you a good flavor for the number of Model Ys that uh, are produced and ready for transport and others that are on the right hand side of the screen awaiting either uh, assignment for trucks to pick them up or maybe some additional work but it seems like they put them on the right side here and then move them to the truck uh, location and then the pickup happens. I now want to also show you on the west side of General Assembly some uh, continued construction and expansion of the cargo bays. As we talked in the previous video, they were saw cutting the wall panels in this location and created these eight new cargo bays, but crews are also busy on the south cutting more, and we'll see that. This ramp is where Model Ys are now exiting the factory when they are completed. And then they follow this routing. You can see kind of the path with the uh, concrete dividers and the building that uh, and the marshaller there with the flag. The cars will follow that path down to the south end. But this is a closer view of those eight new cargo bay doors that were cut in of the last 48 hours. And I will show you crews that are continuing to work right now, preparing to saw cut even more. So we will see a large expansion of the number of cargo bays on this side of the building. I've had a viewer say that the saw that is being used here costs about $55,000. So if that is true, that's just uh, amazing to think of the, the cost and the capability of that saw to be able to cut through this thick of concrete panels. As we wrap around the southwest corner, I want to show you some progress going on at these 20 new supercharger stations. Specifically, crews are installing light poles, and I think this is yet another good indication that these will soon be operational. Uh, some people have asked, will there be red tents here as well? And uh, the chances are pretty high, I would think, but let's see what they do. And uh, we can see the other supercharger station with those red tents in operation. I'm going to give you a closer and lower view of some of the Model Ys uh, on this side of the parking ramp. And this one is interesting. As you can see, it looks like it still has some of that protection that they use for production on that rear corner. I'm giving you a closer look at this tent where this uh, employee is spraying down the car. Now there's speculation that this is a test location to see about leaks and uh, uh, if there's any changes that need to be done on that particular car, if that's the case, that's very interesting, and it is possible, but uh, it's interesting to see them at work anyway. Passing the stamping extension, it's just uh, too difficult to look inside there right now, but there is a lot of work that is continuing with construction and fitting out that portion of the structure. No real changes yet on the painting on this side of the building. But I do want to show you all of these solar panels being stockpiled in this location. Uh, they seem to keep them here for a while, move them to the roof, and then more arrive. 
This material staging uh, location shows you all these trailers and those black trailers are the uh, what they use for the stamping uh, extra pieces for recycling at some point in the future. This just gives you a good view of that south material storage uh, and the number of Model Ys preparing for vehicle pickup today. There's close to 180 of uh, the Model Ys ready for pickup and a truck already took about to eight of them as we saw previously. The number and amount of the materials on the material storage location here continues to grow and expand and it's just uh, uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to see at some point what they are constructing at least visually so I'll be able to show you via the drone. It may be inside that stamping extension so it may be out of view. I hope that you enjoyed this tour of Giga Texas on this Friday the 19th of August and how the site appeared and I hope that you enjoyed the inside views of casting and 4680. Have a great weekend and again thank you very much for watching.